about the uh, Denver defense? You think what, what, what are the most uh, the biggest challenges they present? Well, the front's really good. The backers are athletic and uh, sideline and sideline players. Uh, Pat's one of the best players in the league any position. Um, and the back end's playing well. I mean, they've played three games. They've played solid on defense. Um, so it's going to be a good test for us. Um, you talked about after the game, how teams are attacking Garrett. I'm guessing the game's going to be on this week. How do you balance, you know, wanting to get him involved versus forcing things? Yeah, it's a good question. I think uh, it's just a process. you got to try and put him in situations where he can uh, be the number one in the progression, which he is a lot. And then... Uh, Mix up the look, so we got to, you know, do a lot of things to uh, to give him a chance to get moving. And you know, we like to get the ball to him early, but it's just a process. He's got to be patient. We got to be patient. We can't force it. Pat's a phenomenal player, um, but you know, Garrett is too. So it's going to be a good matchup. Those two guys. Um, a lot of respect for Pat because he plays both sides. Plays in the slot. Not many star coverage corners do that. So a lot of respect for Pat. Devontae was a guy that everyone wanted to take away, and I imagine he didn't see much more on one. So what can a receiver do? or what, like, Because he still got his net, he still got his yards. What can he do to still get open or find a way to separate the defense when they are making it their way? Well, it's tough. If you're, if you're on the line and you're, you're going to be uh, uh, doubled a lot with the safety, um, you know, we found different ways of moving around, motion, and sometimes you just attack the two shell, you know. Uh, but it just comes in the flow. You can't, you know, you can't force it. You got to be patient, and you just got to do all the little things the right way. And there's going to be opportunities. You were bothered last year by what Peyton said about back. Is that on your mind at all going into this game? Back of your mind, front of your mind? No, nah, that's a, mind? that's old news. You know, uh, we've all said things that we'd like to take back. Some things have been said and taken out of context. I'm sure from time to time. But I, I honestly haven't haven't thought about it until you just brought it up. Aaron, first three games back from last year's <laughs> Brees is right there, so oh, okay. uh, Aaron, first three games back from the injury from last year. How do you feel like you've made it through and now the team is two and one? At this point, three games in what, ten days? How do you guys have how the team made it through? Well, I can't say I'm uh, bereft of some difficulties with the uh, uh, you know, the the Achilles. Um, but it's a process. I feel better week one to week two, week two to week three, and then we got a nice little gift there with the, uh, the long weekend. So I feel I feel better. I mean, I said after week one, I felt like I was going to progress and be able to move around a little bit more. I did that maybe a little bit against Tennessee, and then obviously moved around a lot more effectively in week three. Are the team the O line and the running backs and tight ends that went to take the wins for the three games? <laughs> I feel like they've been playing really well. Uh, you, you know, have done a nice job in protection. Um, I'd like to cut down on some of the complaining in the huddle, though, um, <laughs> if I could. Uh, you got to remember, like, this is, it's like in the Aesop fable. Like, you know, we need to be the tortoise. You know, it's slow and steady wins the race. Sometimes you get a little uh, antsy out there. You want the ball. You're complaining. You're, you know, in my in my ear the whole time. We just got to understand it comes comes in the, in the flow. Off the record. <laughs> how, many, how many guys are in your ear at the huddle at the same time? It must be like. I'm teasing Brees because he's annoying me here. Um, <laughs> Brees is one of the best dudes on the team. I mean, you don't hear a peep from him out there, except for him telling me what his job is. I mean, he's he's brilliant on the field. Uh, he really understands the offense. Um, but no, when it, when when I'm in the huddle, when I step in, that's when the conversation stops. Before that, sometimes it's nice to just listen in and see what they're saying, uh, but uh, but not a lot of communication. You obviously have a unique relationship with Allen going back a few years. I think after the game, he said he, he wanted to get his jersey or something like that. I'm wondering if you could just elaborate on that, what, what you would do with something like that, and that's why you guys have clicked for so many years. Well, I think it's a it's a respect thing. You know, I, I watched him on the other field uh, the first time he was with us. And was like, who's that 13 I keep seeing on the field? And we were on the green side. He was on the gold side. It was like ones and twos and threes and fours. And I said, let me get that 13 over on this side. We'll send, you know, a couple guys over there. Let me see what he can do against the ones and twos. And I just, I, I really enjoyed his confidence that he played with. And then what made him money was the dirty work that he did, you know, fitting in there, blocking safeties, inserting in the run game in our, in our duo schemes. Um, 
and then his ability to make plays. You know, he came in in the fourth quarter against Detroit in his coming out party and made, I think, uh, four or five catches and a touchdown. And he kind of just announced to the world, this is not too big for me. Uh, I can make all these plays. And he just kind of progressed from there. But I, I appreciate his approach this year. I think he's been even more dedicated to the details. And he's doing the things that got him paid. You know, he's blocking in the run game. Uh, he's making situational plays. He's uh, done great run after the catch for us. Um, and I'm really proud of Allen, the way he's responded. It means I played a long time. Uh, I remember when I was a young player, there was a lot of records Favre was getting. You know, I think he got uh, 421 touchdowns to pass Marino at the time. Um, you know, all the yard markers that he had, the consecutive games played. And he used to always say, well, it just means I've been around a long time. And I was like, that yeah, means a little more than that. But when I'm in the position now, that's what it feels like. It feels like I've been playing a long time, and naturally this would be part of the process. But I'm thankful to be playing still uh, and that there's milestones like this to hit. Uh, I know there's a story coming out about 10,000, 20, 30, 40, 50, I believe. Uh, spoiler alert, I apologize. If that's a spoiler alert, Rich. Um, <laughs> cut. Um, bringing some percussion over that to, you know, make it uh, make it go away. But uh, but no, I'm thankful for uh, all the guys that got passes for me, all the guys that blocked for me. Uh, couldn't name them all, but uh, give me a little time. Did you? You mentioned Brett. I'm wondering yesterday's announcement, how that resonated with you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tough. Uh, you know, the older you get, and some of you know this, like. Uh, the mortality gets kind of thrown in our face a little bit more. It's actually, unfortunately, more normal to hear about uh, a death or a, a cancer diagnosis or a uh, diagnosis like this. Um, and it doesn't desensitize it for me. I mean, I, I uh, feel bad for him and Deanna. Um, but it's, it's unfortunately part of our game. That's part of the risk of playing. And we all in the back of our mind know that that could be a reality at some point. Um, we just kind of hope medicine uh, at some point can catch up and uh, and either make the symptoms easier or eradicate some of these issues that we have. Aaron Paul uh, talked about the offense building and improving here week to week. What's the key to keeping that going? Is it the work you do on the practice field, chemistry naturally building, something else? You know, it's all of it. It's being able to recall things that happened this morning. We were in a meeting, and I kind of tested them, something we talked about in week one that's going to show up in week four. Can we remember coaching points, signals, different things that we've talked about in week one and training camp because it all shows up. You know, once you get to four games, a lot of the breakdowns for defenses are in four-game segments. Now, some will look back on the entire season, but uh, you start to create tendencies. Now we have tendency breakers off of that, so you just the mental part of it's got to be sharp. The practice habits, you know, you got to practice like a great team if you want to be a great team. Uh, we haven't really practiced in uh, a couple weeks. You know, we had to walkthroughs for the Thursday night game, nice long break. So we got to remember how to practice and have good tempo and, and get accomplished what we need to accomplish before Sunday. Couple more. Have you maintained any sort of relationship with Zach since he got traded? Obviously, you guys were working hand in hand for a short time anyway last year. Which yeah, I, I, I still keep tabs on him and keep, keep in touch here and there. I love Zach and always looked at him, uh, you know, like a little brother. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed our time together on and off the field, and I, I wish him a lot of success. I was really happy for him the way he finished up preseason. And, you know, I think this will be a good year for him to kind of reset, and then hopefully he gets an opportunity uh, down the road. I don't know what going to have to play here for a few weeks with Morgan down. What have you seen from him? Is that inside information? No, that's not inside information. That's out there? Uh, what, you, what, do you, what, do you, what have you seen from him, you know, in training camps, and what you, what's your safe level on him? I don't like to do a lot of comparisons, but I will in this case. From the beginning, I felt like he reminded me a lot of the Brickashaw, uh, personality-wise, and then just the consistency. And I obviously didn't play with Brick, but I know people that did, and I watched him from afar. And it always felt like he was just so consistent uh, week in and week out. Like he was getting beat a lot. He was in the right place. He was good against the run. In the run game, he was good pass blocking. And it's just never been too big for Olu. I feel like he's been consistent every day. He make a mistake. He doesn't make a repeat mistake. His attitude, he's very quiet. He just kind of goes about his business. Um, so I think he's in a good spot. Obviously, he's played a lot of left tackle. 
but he's played right tackle for us in training camp and uh, on the look team the first three weeks. So um, I'm uh, very confident. Of it. Is part of, is Last part one. Of, is part of the growing process for a team is how they handle prosperity. So yeah. Now you got a little taste of that now. And yeah, just like I said, everybody's going to start, you know, letting us a little <laughs> bit. Um, I go back to this quote a lot, but Mike McCarthy said our biggest uh, our biggest struggle is going to be handling success back in, in 2006 in Green Bay. And there's a lot to that. I think, you know, when it's easier when you kind of get kicked in the teeth to to kind of come together. It's us against the world. It's us against the big bad media who's saying how bad we are. You know, we can kind of come together. But can you still come together and have the same approach when everybody's kind of starting to sing your praises a little bit? I think that's the mark of a, of a great team is can you handle the success part with the same focus, the same mentality, the same mindset, uh, the same energy when you're starting to get on a little bit of a roll? What's the key to that? Uh, consistency. You know, I think it's consistent messaging from the top and then the leaders in the locker room uh, exemplifying those messages and and then just trying to to practice good habits. It's, you know, it's not just when you're at the facility. It's what are you doing when you're home? Uh, how are you preparing? Games are often won and lost in the Monday to Saturday of a normal week because that's when you take care of your body, get your rest, eat right, prepare the right way, have the right conversations. And then the Sunday is just the finality of the six days of preparation.